Hello, this is Gary Davis, and in this quick video, I'm going to show you how to use Autodesk Match Mover or other 3D camera solving solutions with Autodesk Smoke 2013. In this example, I'm using the Macintosh version of Match Mover, but you could be using the Match Mover that comes with the Entertainment Creation Suite or 3ds Max uh, Suites or Maya Suites or any of the solutions from Autodesk uh, ways to get Match Mover on either the Windows side or the Macintosh platform. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and load a QuickTime file. This is a file that I, we would like to thank Artbeats for providing these assets. And here you can see we have a camera um, you know, move across this mountain scene and it's just a nice simple move for tutorial purposes. What I'm going to do is come up under 2D tracking here and say automatic tracking and then one of the things that I like to do is actually bring up the settings for this and just reduce this. Um, this isn't always the case but just as a general default I kind of reduce both the sensitivity and density of this uh, solution and then I'm just going to go ahead and click run and this is actually happening in real time. I'm going to let this whole uh, solution happen without doing any pauses or anything and hopefully uh, this doesn't take too long but I'm running this, by the way, on a MacBook Pro, 8-core, uh, 17-inch MacBook Pro with 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, so again, what's happening right now is Match Mover is running. It's doing, as you can see, a camera, a 2D solve, first of all. And the green lines, if you're not familiar with Match Mover, there's green and yellow lines on all of these uh, points. It's actually tracking a tremendous amount of points and then throwing away the ones that it doesn't find useful. So basically, if you're not familiar with Match Mover or other 3D camera solvers, this is kind of how they operate. First, they do a sort of a 2D track, and then under the hood, they're going to process this uh, and solve for the 3D camera, which you can see I have enabled right here. So I'm doing a 2D track and then taking the results of that 2D track and processing a 3D camera. And then what we're about to do is take that resulting camera into a module inside of Autodesk Smoke called Action. And if you're not familiar with Action, that's the 3D compositing environment where you can add things like lights and cameras and FBX 3D geometry and all that. So as this track uh, gets cleaned up here or finishes up, now what's going to happen is it'll process this uh, as the main camera. So you can see down at the bottom there, it's almost done. Uh, there we've got our main camera, 3540. So it's going to happen pretty quick. Uh, this clip is a total of 156 frames at 24 frames per second. So, you know, it's not too bad. Um, it's keeping me busy talking to you all, but I'm just trying to explain and show you the uh, the ease of use and that there's you know no tricks up my sleeve here. We're just using pretty much default values with uh, the exception of me just dropping down that sensitivity setting um, and then you know the number of points. So this thing should finish up here in a moment. Processing keys, it's hanging at 66%. There we go. It's doing a little bit more math under the hood there. And we're going to get our result. Now, some of you may be asking, uh, you know, why would I do this in Match Mover or another application, maybe like Synthize or Buju or another 3D camera tracker? Well, Smoke's tracker that's built into it, and there it's finished up. Uh, Smoke's tracker that's built in is a two dimensional tracker, and it has some additional tools like the uh, perspective grid that are very handy, and there's other tutorials out there on the internet for that. But I just wanted to show you how easy it is for. Um, 3D camera tracking to get into Smoke. Now what I'm going to do is come up under File and say Export and under the Export settings for um, Match Mover we have lots of different options things like 3ds Max, Combustion and so on but we also have this uh, one called Flint Flame Inferno dot action which is the uh, dot action is the setup and I'm going to call this um, Web Demo and it's going to be a web demo dot action. I'm going to save that out. Then I can actually exit out of Match Mover. It might be a good idea to save this. I won't save it in this particular case because uh, I did one practice before this. And now here we are over in Smoke. So what I'm going to do is go over to the Media Hub and browse to my uh, directory. I'm going to load the same clip in. And I'm in this case, I don't need to cache the source media because I'm loading this off of a nice uh, RAID array uh, from Promise, a Thunderbolt RAID array. So I'm going to import this come over to my timeline and then I'm just going to open this as an image sequence or a sequence in the edit uh, switching this to a player view so we can see that we have the same clip loaded now what I can do is very easily go in and add a connect effects and once I'm inside of connect effects I can very easily add an action module now this action module is one that's already loaded and it doesn't have any cameras or anything and you can see that our, our image sequence or our quick time is coming in as a backplate however what I want to do is go to this action node and under the node preferences, I'm going to say, let's load 
this setup that we just created. So I'm going to go to load node. Do you want to do this? And you know, it's kind of giving me a warning. Yes, I want to do this. And now I'm just going to browse to the top of my uh, directory structure here. I'm going to go out to my volumes, go to my promise array, go into my match mover project here. And here is the web demo file that I just created. So when I double click this, you can see that I get that point cloud data. And if I just scrub the timeline, you've got all this great point cloud information. Well, all I have to do to get that over top of my footage is just sort of re-pipe this uh, clip back into our backplate of action. So very easily, you now you can see that we've got our point cloud and it is in fact slaved right onto our footage like we'd expect and now what you can do is use that for any number of things in this case I'll just show you one example um, this action node with the action node selected I'm gonna go in instead of our connect effects schematic I'm gonna switch to our action schematic and here you're gonna see tons and tons of all these points or axes and these are the point helpers so here's our camera that was the resulting camera and there it is um, now one of the things that I could do is maybe say let's go to the action bin and add something like 3D text. So here's our 3D text and it has its own action or sorry its own axis and there's like I said I'm going to do this kind of quick because there's lots of other tutorials out here. Let's maybe change this text to say uh, smoke 2013. Go ahead and do that. Uh, let's reduce the size of this. Let's maybe give this uh, text a little bit of depth. And then real quick, I'm going to uh, hold down uh, spacebar M and then spacebar A to add a little bit of a bevel here. Spacebar M to get back to our move tool and just kind of change that bevel out. That looks good. Now our, our uh, text doesn't have any lighting on it. So one more thing I'm going to add is under our uh, relighting tools, let's just drag and drop a light out here. And now you can see that we've got some nice lighting uh, in our scene and very quickly I'm just going to move our light around a little bit you can see let's pull it way back off camera now our text isn't really slaved to anything one in particular thing but you can see that it's already moving with that point cloud now what I could do is come back to a certain frame here and let's say for example we wanted to pick this point in space well I can just pick that and then I can go very easily hunt through all those points and there it is there, there's the point that I selected so I can come back up and just kind of put this over here for better housekeeping and now what I can do is um, just sh uh, shift kiss this uh, to these two nodes so this node that was resulting from our match mover camera uh, match is now apparent to this node which is controlling our text so if I double click this and maybe scale up our text you can see that it's coming up 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 and since it's an offset axis I can do things like that scale and even position this maybe a little bit more forward from the mountain or something like that so now that we've got our text right on top of that mountain we can you know go up go about our business of prettying it up maybe doing reflection maps and so on but for this example I'll, I'll call it quits at that and then if we want to render this out what we could do is maybe go to node prefs and turn up our any listing samples uh, for time's sake I'll leave it just at two and then if we exit back out of connect effects here's back with our timeline and you can see that we've got our uh, let's just go ahead and render that down it shouldn't take too long 20 23 seconds so what we're gonna have is uh, you know our 3d camera tracked footage that's slave to our backplate but at this point we can add any number of things like I said including FBX geometry coming from something like 3ds max or we could add uh, you know other video footage to this and slave it to those points uh, you know kind of the at this point the floodgates are wide open and then as we play this back down you can see that our text is in fact slave to a, our 3D camera track. So that's a quick look at 3D camera tracking uh, using Autodesk Match Mover and then bringing that data into Autodesk Smoke 2013's uh, 3D compositing module known as Action. Thanks.